Can you hear me? Perfectly. Perfect. Where are you actually? I'm in Singapore. So you decided Singapore against London. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, is, is having come from Singapore, I had to do a mandatory 14 day quarantine when I came here. So because the perception is of London as being slightly uh, of a high risk uh, zone. So I've, yes. been, I've been here for, uh, so I did initially a 14 day quarantine. Then I came out um, and then a day later they decided to lock the country down. So I had just enough time to go buy toilet paper and to buy a few, uh, a few, a few groceries. And then that was essentially it. But it's okay, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, it is what it is. And often, honestly, it's for the best. I mean, this is what the world needs right now is for us to, to you know, not overwhelm the healthcare system, get the, 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 the transmissions and sort of the mortality rate down. And then, you know, we can, we can figure out how to live our lives again, right? Yeah, which is, which is indeed challenging. I just said you are the first, actually, it's my first interview um, about the digital watches and wonders. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, um, it's interesting times to say the least. Um, it's, it's, it's challenging on all ends. Um, it's something and you know, you and I, we've been around for quite a while. But, but nothing, nothing has prepared us for it. Um, no. There is no, there is, there has been no similar situation, um, and now we deal with it uh, best way possible. I believe that strong brains uh, before the crisis will be strong brains after the crisis, and weak brains before the crisis will probably even be weaker after the crisis. I totally agree. Um, I totally agree. So that's my take on it, and and the time in between we have to manage in a way that you know we maintain and we can keep our people uh, um, sane and healthy and uh, you know also their financials okay um, that's 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 my main aim and I just cross fingers that we are not into a, a, a two three year recession um, because you know if it's too long then even very healthy and strong companies have to um, to find solutions that I do not want to think about right now. Of course. You know, uh, well, let's talk about uplifting things. First, may I first of all welcome you, Willem. Um, Willem Schmidt, CEO of Long Unsown, one of my favorite people in the watch industry and a truly great guy. Um, how are you, sir? I'm, I'm personally very well. Um, and uh, the rest, we're dealing with a situation that I've never experienced before. Yes. I guess we're all kind of participating in what is the new normal. So we're doing um, all of our communication through these conference calls. We're sitting all day in front of our screen. I have my friends are exercising in front of their screen. They're doing like uh, uh, HIT workouts and even Peloton and all these kind of things, you know. So we are, I guess, you know, I, I want to talk to you a little bit later about how I guess you, you feel as if this will have any, if, if, if any permanent effect on how we live our lives. But first, let's talk about watches because I think there is some, yeah. um, Thousands of people around the world um, that were hoping to see the unveiling of, of the incredible Langa novelties at SIHH, and we can still do that. We're just going to do it digitally. Yes. So let's uh, first start with one of my favorite watches, which is the Zeitwerk. Um, you know, it's funny because I, I, I have the actual experience of being in the Dresden Opera um, Opera House and looking at the, uh, the the clock, the five minute clock that's that's up on top. <laughs> And and, uh, and 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 I remember this being the inspiration for the grand date um, that you see uh, in the yes. one. And I know Mr. Blumlein and um, uh, and Mr. Langa, uh, Walter Langa, were both very inspired by this and wanted to make it part of the signature of their very first watch and their most iconic watch. Let's cut to 2008, where Langa takes this sort of um, digital indication and creates a watch that is, in some ways, a revolution. A revelation technically because it incorporates a constant force mechanism that is rearmed every 60 seconds to make sure that the jumping of the minutes is precise and doesn't consume energy in any sort of um, a way that it's erosive to the accuracy of the watch. Yes. And a watch that has now become an icon. What, what, tell us a bit about your affection and love for the Zeit. Look, it's, it's in, in, in today's world um, where lots of watches are being launched literally monthly uh, now and um, Everything that is successful is usually copied very quickly. 
um, that SiteVec is an exception uh, because to my knowledge at least there aren't any uh, look-alikes um, of the SiteVec around. Uh, there are a few people that worked with uh, the digital jumping disks but they also quickly realized how technical complicated is what looks so simple um, and and everybody knows that this is a watch which is in very uh, uh, short supply and and, 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 and sought after um, but nobody so far is copying it um, so that is good for us because that gives us the whole field to exploit um, everything around the side back and and to be honest if you look at it um, it's also complicated to do that because because of the strong design and if you want to maintain that strong design it means any addition has to complement the original design a little bit like with the Lange one you know where we launched the 10 watches last year and you look at the 10 watches and you will clearly see it's a Lange one even from the very simple one to the most complicated one, uh, um, having a, a tourbillon and a perpetual calendar. Same with the side rack. So you have the very basic side rack, just giving you hour, minute, and um, and uh, the second and the power indication uh, to the minute repeater, which you know we all know is probably of the three big complication um, the most challenging. Um, and again, to make it decimal. These are all these little tweaks that we, we put into. Um, makes it so interesting work with that system because it is totally different to a watch that's operated by hands. Um, then we launched last year the Zeitwerk date to also you know, uh, uh, celebrate a little bit the 10th anniversary of that, of that family. And um, well, this year we will come with uh, a new Zeitwerk um, in a in minute repeater in a beautiful execution. Um, a new material, uh, not steel, white gold. <laughs> um, but uh, people know that changing the material on a minute repeater is not, has not the same implications than changing material in a normal watch. In a normal watch, you talk about less water resistance or uh, more scratch uh, um, resistant. But with a minute repeater, we talk about sound, and we know by now that every metal um, is creating a different sound. So that was uh, the challenge. And of course, we also do it, um, we do it uh, in a different face. Um, we use again a very dark blue. I Perfect. Have absolutely yes stunning. yes i have this issue with the minute repeaters i think the microphone is in a different place in the camera so it makes it really <laughs> difficult to record the sound, unfortunately. but but you know let's like let's this the site work is is you know is incredible and and i you know it now has become this amazing family of watches that you were saying um 2008 it was launched 2010 you did the luminous version of it the phantom lumen yes. if i'm not mistaken 2014, you came with the striking time, which was uh, hours and quarters, 15 with the minute repeater. And I guess this is in some ways the uh, fifth anniversary of this amazing minute repeater, which is, um, a, first of all, I love the fact that from a visual signature, you have the shape gong on the front, whereas the striking time has a round gong on the front. Here you exactly. have a, a gong that follows the, the, the form and flow of the, the time bridge. Um, and it also is a decimal minute repeater because as I, I remember interviewing you about this, you said, well, it would have made no sense to do quarters on a digital watch. And yes. I love the fact that you always do things with complete seriousness. But you were saying um, that there were some challenges every time you switch material. I believe the first minute repeater was it in platinum, correct? Yes. And so now we've moved to white gold. And, he, and you were saying there were some acoustic challenges to, to apply the technology to this material. It is, you know, it's, I, I think from, all complications those that work with acoustics are the most most challenging because you know you can measure a lot acoustic we all struggle with um and it's also a personal feeling so some metal sound harder others sound softer um and to adjust it to make it suitable for that watch is is, is a challenge so you cannot just take the movement that we had in a platinum watch put that into the white gold version and assume the job is done because it's not. You have to work with the gongs. You have to work with um, 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 
the hammer to, 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 to really create the sound you think is appropriate for the white gold version. Um, so you cannot just move it aside. There is work that goes in it. Um, and you have few watchmaker that can work on it. Um, and it's a learning phase. Um, so today we're very happy to have them. Um, but people, you know, in that case, I emphasize on it because it is not just changing a movement or just changing one movement and put it into another case with a different dial. It is a little bit more complicated. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and, you know, the, the, the price of the uh, Zywer Mini Repeater, I think when it was launched, was 440,000 uh, uh, euro, um, which is, let's face it, not an insubstantial amount of money. You know, no, do, it's not. Do, but it's again, it's an extraordinary watch and it's something singular that no one else has created, right? This combination of sort of beautiful digital time indication with a constant force mechanism yes. with the gong and, and, the, and the hammers in the front and a decimal minute repeater. Do you still feel as if in um, the post, I guess, kind of COVID 19 world, there will be a, a place in the world for beautiful objects such as minute repeaters? I. Really hope so. Um, I believe that human mankind um, went through all sort of struggle in the history. Um, and there have always been beautiful things that were developed in these specific moments of, uh, of challenges. Um, and I don't believe that human kin, mankind will move away from the desire um, to, to own and admire beautiful objects. And that does not only go for watches. I, I don't think a second that famous painters will now stop painting. Uh, famous musicians will now stop playing music. Um, a famous architect will not think about the next great building or bridge. Um, so why should we stop thinking, creating, producing beautiful objects? Uh, because we are at the moment in a very challenging environment. You're absolutely right. You know, it's funny. I was just having a conversation with uh, Chris Granger, um, and I guess uh, the Portuguese, which is also a watch I was wearing today. You know, this was created at the, at the in, during the '30s, the late '30s, when there was so much kind of political and, and social and economic strife. And and looking back at the history of some of my favorite watches, uh, Patek Philippe, for example, which is another brand I like, in addition to Lana. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which. Um, I, you know, again, some of the most famous paddocks were created in, at the time when things were most difficult as well. So I think that the human response to difficulty and, and the one that is most uh, noble in many ways is the, yeah. creation of, is the creation of beauty. And that's something that you certainly do, you know? Well, by the way, we launched the Zeitwerk where the, at a time where the world was also in a turmoil, huh? So, I so it, that, hey, yeah. You know, 08, 09, we're not particularly inviting, uh, um, it was not a particularly inviting period of time to launch something extraordinary special. And we did, and 10 years later, it's uh, still a great success. So um, it's, it's, I, I fully understand at the moment it's a different situation. Um, but, you know, we humans are very adaptive. We will learn to live with these restrictions. We will learn to cope with it. And, and, and then we will also want to go back to something more normal and for some people that is collecting beautiful watches. Indeed. Uh, you know, it's funny because now that I'm in social isolation, I find my watches to be even more meaningful to me. I mean, they are kind of who I'm interacting with the most, you know? And, and what I did yesterday, I have to be honest, because, you know, I spent quite a bit of time in Glasutte, but I'm also, you know, having sometimes home offices specifically when the first calls in the morning are very early because we talk to China and, 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 and Asia. Um, and so I spend more time than ever at home. Um, and I had to I have to admit at the weekend I was down and, and I just looked at uh, some watches. Um, you know, it's, 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 we learn to appreciate the little things again. Not a bad, not a bad, you know, it's like after a proper diet, Yes. You really enjoy your first glass of wine. You really enjoy <laughs> your first glass of um, 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 champagne. You really love the first food, normal food again after diet. And maybe what we experience right now will have a similar effect. So can't wait uh, seeing you in person again. 
Um, and for the time being, we have to enjoy with what we experience right now. You know, I, I totally agree, Willem. And, and one, of, one of the things I associate Langa with is it's such a wonderfully human brand as well. You know, all of the people there are so warm, yourself, obviously Tony De Haas, um, but, but the entire, the entire you know, sort of staff and, uh, of Langa are just such kind people and such human people. And I remember some of our favorite interactions have been ones where we've always been together in groups, you know, like this wonderful drive that we did from, uh, from Munich to, uh, to, to Lago de Como, to uh, yes. for the, uh, yes. and you know, this is a, a, when you are in social isolation, you look back at these times and you treasure these memories even more. You treasure the yeah. camaraderie, the sincerity, the specialness, the humor, yeah. every, everything, you know? I, to I, to I totally agree. You know, it's, um, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm appreciating the situation. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm, my head is full of uh, uh, worries and concerns and, 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 and we're working long hours uh, for, for, little, for little reward uh, because usually you work and you see turnover and things like that. And at the moment that of course is not the case. So it's hard work because it's like, you know, not rewarding work um, in, in a typical way. Um, but you also, you know, you live from your memories. Um, and, and from the hope that these memories will be a new reality in, in a couple of months onwards. Um, at the moment, we know that the Concorde d'Elegance in Italy doesn't take place. So regardless what you and I want, there will be no trip from Munich. <laughs> yeah. um, but again, it's, it's not the end of the world. Uh, there will be other maze, there will be other Concorde d'Elegance. Um, so I, I still hope that eventually um, we will claim back our normal life, and even if we have to do that with restrictions. You know, I think one of the most important things that we, we will learn during this period is this whole concept of, of what we purchase, um, wh what we invest in. Is that something that comes from a brand, um, from a maison that, whose underlying philosophy and, and principles and ethics are something that we also admire in addition to that object being beautiful, you know? Yeah. And, and I have always sort of admired and loved um, both Langa, but also the way you have guided Langa. Also from the perspective that, you know, you, you, there was never a desire to overproduce. There was always a desire to keep it special. There was always a desire to have balance. Balance between yeah. um, what the watchmakers were capable of producing, um, to make sure that quality was still there, that they had a decent and enjoyable life as well, that they, you know, had a good existence and that there were watches that customers could have. So for example, the, you know, all these watches, whether it be the Odysseus or the, 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 uh, the Zeitwerk, they are, you know, oftentimes limited in, in production simply by not wanting to overproduce. Is this a yes. thing that more and more people will adopt moving into the post-COVID-19 period? I, look, if, if, I, I wish I would know, um, I, I, I'm bluntly honest. Um, I think eventually, we will come back to a life that is similar to the one we had before. I just have no idea, is that going to happen in a year or two or three? Um, I think there are some critical milestones that needs to be achieved to control the situation. And um, then we also have eventually to understand the implications of this lockdown. Um, and how to work with it. Um, and, 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 and the moment we have a little bit more certainty, um, I think we are more back to normal life. Um, I believe, as I said before, strong brands before the crisis will be strong brands after the crisis. Um, and a strong brand for me, a strong maison means you're, what you do is authentic. You know, you don't change because the wind is coming from a different direction. It doesn't mean you're stupid and you repeat yourself, but you, that, that set of values that describes you as a company, our products, um, the way we interact with people, with stakeholders, that set of value must not be changed um, for opportunistic reasons. You can change your watches. You know, we launched the Odysseus last year 
which, as you and I know, is still fueling a big discussion. Um, so you can change. That's not the question, but you must stick to your set of values. Um, and, and I believe even that crisis will not um, help, will not make us changing our set of values. As a matter of fact, I think the set of value that we have as a company um, is also giving us a certain resilience in, in these tough times. So as a matter of fact, I think it's quite an advantage. Um, and, and that's, that's my, my big job, you know, to maintain the, the core of the brand, which is the set of values that, that makes us ticking along. Amazing. Uh, and very well said, you know, and, and I completely agree with you. I, I love the fact that you're evolving uh, Lange without repeating yourself, but always having respect for where you came from. And one of those biggest sort of, I guess, evolutions was the launch of your first steel integrated bracelet sports watch last year, the hmm. now famous Odysseus. And Odysseus was a very interesting watch for me because, um, a, you know, I think one of the things you, you, you say is that you should always recognize it as a Lange, even if there's no logo on it. And when you looked at it, even though it was a departure, you could still tell it was a Lange. In some ways, it even kind of incorporated a bit of the uh, horizontal time-telling language of the Zeitwerk in terms of having the days of the week and the yeah. big size date as well. And then it brought something altogether new, which was the use of steel and integration of bracelet, um, screw down crown and 120 meters water resistance. Tell us about the Odysseus. And you mentioned there's, it fuels a debate, but it's an interesting debate. And it's, and yes. I tell you, I'm, there are people who are passionate about it, are so passionate about it, you know? Yes. And, you know, there are I, I, three trends. First of all, as we, as we started designing the watch, uh, producing it, we were aware of it'll be a controversial discussion. Actually, my biggest worry was that there is no controversial discussion that we come up with something which is so natural langer that everybody said oh yeah wonderful and then moves on because i believe um that's the biggest yeah, that's the biggest challenge to create something which is you but different similar by the way to the zeitwerk which was also not only um uh, seen with applause in the beginning. Actually, a lot of series collectors turned away from the watch. Uh, big markets like Japan said, mm, that's not a lange. Um, <laughs> it took them years to, 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 to find. Uh, today, it's a good market for specifically the Zeitwerk, but it, it just means very traditional collectors, um, <clears throat> they need time. Um, and, and in the beginning, uh, it was fueling a big debate. Um, I see three trends. First of all, whoever had the watch around his wrist has a different perspective and a different opinion than before. I'm not saying whoever puts it around his wrist is going to buy it. That's not what I'm saying. But I know for sure there is an impact in on your opinion, whether you have just seen the watch in the digital world or you had it in the natural habitat of a wristwatch, which is actually the wrist. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is um, even those that were very vocal um, will admit it is a Lange and Söhne watch. You know, whether they like it or not, that's not the question, but it is a Lange and Söhne. It's to today the fight that I would always take on if somebody tells me that's not an a Lange and Söhne. Uh, it is. You may not like it, that's fine, um, but it is definitely an Arlange and Söhne. And the third thing is, one big discussion was about the bracelet. Um, and um, I was wearing the watch for about four months, um, and, and I, hate, I had to give it back, but I hated it. Um, you get very used to that watch, very oh. used. Um, the good news is for all those that struggle with a metal bracelet and think, you know, they want it on the leather or a rubber strap, as uh -huh. you know, yes. um, that's the second novelty that we will um, unveil. So um, that's and absolutely. I, and again, I, it looks amazing yeah. on this. I think it looks so cool on this. Um, this okay. So this is a version that's uh, not in steel, it's in white gold, correct? Yes. 
only white gold. Um, you, you can change the uh, leather strap against the rubber strap if you want, but right. the watch will only come with one strap. But, you know, it's it's changeable and it's easy changeable. Uh, mechanism is is very similar to to uh, the um, uh, Odysseus and steel. Um, what you can see here very nicely is we again we just not put a white gold case and call it a day. Uh, the dial is totally different to the dial of the steel watch. Um, and it's again the details that makes this watch so lovely. If you have it around your wrist, um, I can't wait getting mine, I have to say. That's the privilege of being the CEO. <laughs> I'll get mine soon. Um, it is a great, great, great looking watch. And it's a very cool looking watch, I have to say. But I remember uh, looking at these and there's, you know, it, it's, it's interesting by changing the strap and by, you know, changing the dial, it, there's a completely different spirit to these watches as well. And yes. I really dig it. There's like a lightness to them as well. There's a playfulness to them. There's a little bit more kind of like chicness to them as well. Whereas the first ones were a little bit more robust, you know, but they're very cool. I mean, this is really the type of watch you could imagine yourself, you know, jumping into the swimming pool at the Grand Hotel Tremezzo. Where we were staying in a, in in in, a, in absolutely Florida. absolutely it's uh again and 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 I hope for those uh, collectors that we you know that did not like a steel bracelet um, I hope this is the solution um, to their um, request of wearing a Lange and Zuna watch. Uh, when they're in their private time, uh, playing with the children, jumping into the pool, hiking, biking, doing God knows what. This is, you know, one of my favorite um, stories is that uh, when, when Gianni Agnelli used to arrive in the south of France, uh, he used to have his helicopter hover um, over the water and then he, yeah. would either, he would jump into the water and either swim to the Hotel de Cap or swim to his house. And his <laughs> friends that were in the helicopter, they all had to do the same thing. And I imagine that if I had to jump into the water <coughs> after Jenny Agnelli wearing a watch, this is the watch that I would want to be wearing doing it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really That's shoot. a very nice, that's a nice picture, Ray. Very nice, yes. Like, no, because you have to be elegant if you're going to be hanging out with Agnelli. Absolutely. This is, this is it. It's really cool. Now, now, Willem, can I ask you, will the, um, the bracelets eventually be made, the rubber strap and the, the leather strap also be made eventually available for the steel watch? Or no. Is it the white gold. No, it, it will only be, you know, steel will, steel as you know it, we will not change that for a long, long time. Um, it's, you know, when we start things, we stick to it. Um, so that's why we give alternatives. So if you want a steel watch and a steel bracelet, you go for the Odysseus uh, that we launched last year at the 24th of October. And if you feel more comfortable with a rubber or a leather strap, you go for the white gold version, which we're going to launch in a couple of days. Amazing. And, and when will these be available to purchase, the Odysseus and white gold and also the repeater? Um, the repeater, because we worked on it before and we need a lot less components um, you know, from, from uh, suppliers, will be available, I think, from May onward. Right. depending on shipping, logistics, and so on and so forth, because that's not in our hands at the moment. The, this year's will take longer um, because, you know, we get dial supplied and so on and so forth, and that's at the moment a little unpredictable to, to, to know when. We hope for summer. It's a beautiful watch, and for summer... It is. Summer. It's a summer watch, yes. <laughs> I'm so that we're able to hang up together towards the end of summer. You know, that would be a dream. Yes. Thank you but so we live much. in times where that is a little bit more, it was all planned perfectly as it was planned that you and I sit in my little room in the booth in Geneva, having a drink, uh, chatting, having these nice delicate chocolates and talking watches. And here we sit, you in Singapore, I'm in Glasshütte, the sun is shining here, the sun is shining there, but that's uh, as, 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 as close as it gets at the moment. 
Absolutely. Well, you know, as I said, it makes us appreciate the past times, but it also helps us to look forward to the next ones. And, Absolutely. Uh, and I can't wait to see you again, Willem. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Uh, genuinely, uh, all the best to you, to your family, to everyone in Line of Sun. And again, um, I, I love both the watches, but uh, the Odysseus and the white gold on that rubber strap is killer. So, bravo. <laughs> Thank you, Wade. Stay healthy. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.